We are now serious on the Black Scholes model, and today we're talking about Brownian motion or what is Brownian motion, and this is going to be our central tool to model the price of a financial asset. And Brownian motion is something that is called a stochastic process. And I will first give you a simple example of a stochastic process, and then we're going to get into Brownian motion, which is a very specific stochastic process. But let's start with a simple example. Let's suppose we're interested in, in modeling the goals in a soccer match, okay? And here's a simple model for that. Let's just say every 30 minutes, the probability that there's a goal, so the probability of a goal is 60%. And those goals are independent of each other. So this is a specific stochastic process. So what does it look like? So we're... We're at the beginning of the game and we have our model in mind. So what could happen now? So one thing that could possibly happen is we have zero goals until minute 30. Then there's the 60% chance that a goal falls. And let's just say in this game, a goal falls. So we're at one goal. At minute 60, a goal falls again. So we have two goals in our game. And let's just say at minute 90, a goal falls again. So we're at three goals. What's the probability that this is actually the representation of our stochastic process? Well, it's 60% times 60% times 60%. So the probability of that is 21.6%. Okay? Another representation of our stochastic process could be, okay, we have no goal in the first 30 minutes, then a goal falls, then at minute 60, a goal falls again, and then at minute 90, no goals fall. So we have two goals in total. What's the probability that this is actually the sample path of our stochastic process? Well, the probability is 60% times 60% times 40%, which is 14.4%. So this is a stochastic process. It's a model on how a variable in this time, in, in this example, goals in a soccer match, could evolve over time. And what we can do with this, we have representation and we can derive probabilities, right? We can derive the probability that the purple path is exactly the path that the goals will take in the upcoming match, or that the blue path is exactly the path that is going to happen in the soccer match. Okay, so this is what a stochastic process is. So let's now go into what Brownian motion is. And Brownian motion is another way or another stochastic process, so a way to model how a variable moves over time. And it has four basic properties that I'm now going to give to you. So it starts at zero. So at time t, our, our Brownian motion starts at zero. So this is time, this is Brownian motion at that time. Second property is that is a continuous function in time. So those two are rather formal. And now comes an important assumption. The important assumption is that increments are normally distributed. They're distributed normally with mean zero and variance is the distance of the increment. So if our increment is between S and U, then the variance will be S minus U. So if this is my Brownian motion, and here's u, and here's s, then the realizations here are normally distributed with mean 0 and variance s minus u. So at time u, I am at this point, and on average, I will be at the same point at time s. And the probability that I end upwards of this point or downwards of this point are exactly equal there, exactly 50%, okay? And the fourth property of Brownian motion is that, that it is independent of what happened before. Um, I will give you in math, so increments of the Brownian motion, so z at time s minus z at time u is independent of everything that happened before you. So what does that mean? Let's go back to our graph. 
So this is my Brownian motion. This is my S and this is my U. And now when I am at point U and I want to make predictions of what's going to happen in this increment, it doesn't help me to look at what happened prior U. Because everything that happens in the future is independent of what happens in the past, right? One last point on Brownian motion. So when you see Brownian motion, people often draw a kind of wiggly sample path of the Brownian motion. But as I've shown you with the soccer match example, this is only one representation of Brownian motion, and it has a certain probability. And as with the soccer match example, if I'm at time zero, I don't know which representation is going to happen. So it could be the blue representation. It could also be the red representation. So this would be representation two. And it could also be maybe a representation like this. So this would be representation three. But what Brownian motion formulates is it formulates probabilities, right? We can calculate probabilities for each of the sample paths. We could, for instance, calculate a probability that Brownian motion evolves inside this interval at time, let's call this time v. So this is what Brownian motion is given, giving us. It gives us a probability distribution or probabilities for different movements of the variable. Yeah, And with Brownian motion, it's more likely that the variable stays centered across the zero line then that it drifts off very far, okay? And this is going to be the central building block. Brownian motion is going to be the stochastic process we use in the Black-Scholes model to model stock prices, but more on that later.